Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Sam Stenson. I'm a video production intern here at Somerville Media Center in Austin, Massachusetts, and welcome to part two of our four-part series on Adobe After Effects. So in this video right here, I'm gonna be teaching you how to navigate the basic layout of After Effects, highlight some things that are different from what you might be used to from working in Premiere, uh, show you some useful hotkeys, and finally, we're gonna start composing in the timeline itself right down here. So I'm gonna be picking up right where Stuart left off. So by this point, you should have created your After Effects project and you should have imported some sweet, sweet footage that you can see right over here. Look at all this, look at all this nice stuff. So as you can see, we're working with some really, uh, really high quality footage here. Okay, we'll put, the word, we'll put the word Pixar right there. Okay, that's enough. So let's get started with the layout of the program. So as you can see, the layout of After Effects is pretty similar to what you're used to working with in Premiere but everything's just a little bit off. So let's start with what's pretty similar. That's the display window right here. Um, not too much different from Premiere. This is where you're going to be seeing your footage displayed as you scroll through the timeline. And speaking of the timeline, that's located right down here, exactly where it is in Premiere, although it does function a little bit differently and we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, this up here is a little bit different and I'm sure Stuart covered this in the previous video. So let's take a look at some of the most simple and useful tools that After Effects has to offer. I'm sure you recognize this guy up here. This is the selection tool. It's reprising its role from Premiere, and it has pretty much the same function. This is gonna be your main tool for navigating the menus. It'll also allow you to manipulate footage in the display window using the transform features. You can always find it by clicking on this little icon up here, but if you are like me and you are hotkey and shortcut minded, pressing the V key at any point will switch you to this tool. It's very useful, especially in the early stages where you may have switched onto a tool that you don't fully understand yet, and you just wanna get back to some form of normalcy. So the V key is always there for you. It'll always get you back to the selection tool. Over here is the hand tool. The main use that I find for the hand tool is moving around your composition in the display window. Now, this isn't manipulating the composition itself. It's just manipulating your viewpoint of it. It's very useful for focusing on more detailed areas or if you have to do a bunch of little effects to different parts of the frame and you wish to move it around to kind of have more comfort while you're doing so. Very useful for that. There's a couple other uses, but I'm not gonna get into it too much because this is, this is only episode two, guys. And the shortcut for the hand tool, if you don't wanna click up here, is H. H, hand, kind of makes sense. Little mnemonic device for you guys there. Um, just helps me out. You know, that kind of thing always helps me out. Over here, we have the zoom tool, little magnifying glass. This is used to manipulate your view of your compositions within the display window. Now left clicking with this tool will zoom in to the point of your cursor. And if you hold down option while using this tool and left click, it zooms out. Now this is the more precise way to use this tool, but if you wanna do some quick and dirty zooming in and out, you can always use command plus and command minus. It will achieve the same effect. Whoa, what the did I do? What the f***ing did I just... Oh, and I almost forgot that the shortcut for this tool is Z. How I like to remember this is Z buzz like a bee. A bee zooms really fast, like the zoom tool. So, Z buzz fast. This is such a stupid bit. Okay, moving on to the rotation tool. It's this little proto-recycling logo. And the function of this tool is pretty self-explanatory. You use it to rotate layers or elements within the composition. You can also access this option by looking at the transform settings down here, but since After Effects is a rotation heavy program, they wanna put it front and center. Now, if any of you lovely viewers wanna take a gander at what the shortcut key for rotate is, uh, you would most likely be right. It's, it's obviously W. And finally, we're gonna be looking at the text tool. This tool functions very similarly to how it does in Premiere. So if you'd like to type some snide remarks into your video, you can do that. It's also great for subtitles as well. And the shortcut for that one is Command T. Command T will bring you to the text function. All right, so I think that's enough tools and shortcuts for now. Okay, let's move on to the timeline. Down here is the timeline. And this timeline is where 
I think you're going to run into the most trouble if you're coming over from Premiere. It definitely gave me a lot of trouble when I was transitioning from Premiere to After Effects for the first time. If you have a trackpad on your laptop, you can zoom using your fingers like so. However, you can also use this slider up here if that is not an option. Okay, let's start by dragging an asset into our timeline. Now, each one of these is called a layer. It's a pretty similar concept to what you will see in Premiere. However, unlike Premiere, there cannot be multiple files on one layer. Say you can't put this clip here and then drag down another one of these clips and put it after that here, like you would in traditional editing software. No, 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 no. In After Effects, each layer can only control one file at a time. You can't even chop up the layer and leave gaps in multiple places. You're going to have to make a new layer for that. Now, there's some workarounds for that I might get into in a later episode, but for now, that's all you need to know. One layer for one chunk of file. You can color code each layer as well. Uh, that's another thing I recommend doing if you're going to get into some very layer heavy compositions. But for now, for now, we can scrub through, play, pause, just like Premiere. Something that is not like Premiere, however, is the arrow keys. In Premiere, you're probably used to using the left and right arrow keys to navigate and move through the timeline in your project. That doesn't quite work in After Effects. In After Effects, if you have a layer selected and you use the arrow keys, the arrow keys are actually going to move the layer itself, if you can see down here. They're actually going to move the layer itself forward and backwards instead of moving your time indicator forwards and backwards. Now that takes a while to get used to. The good thing is, by holding command and using the arrow keys, you can use them essentially the same way you did in Premiere. Right arrow key to move forward in the timeline, left arrow key to move backwards in the timeline. Just like Premiere, you can add as many layers as you want. Here I have two little Pixar lamps. And placing a layer above another layer will position it in front of the layer that's immediately below it. Now the last thing I'm going to go over is pre-composing. Pre-composing is something that you're going to be doing a lot of, especially whenever you're working with more than five or so layers. Uh, it also comes in very, very handy if you're doing any character animation. So I'm going to put my little light down here. I'm going to put this little discount old school Walmart logo down here. That's not a PNG. There we go. That's a PNG. <laughs> Say I have a little character here. I'd like to put this smiley face on this light bulb. As you can see, this is a very realistic and uh, very seamless character. And say you want to move this character around without having to select multiple layers or without accidentally placing a layer in between the two elements of this layer. And you can use this whenever you want two elements within your composition to move around as one. So what you're going to want to do is pre-compose them. So hold down shift, click here and select both of your elements. You're then going to want to control click or right click on both of those effects and scroll down here and click on pre-compose. Now it's going to come up with a little window asking us what we'd like to title the pre-comp. Uh, I'm just going to call it Pixar Lamp Smiley Man Lamp Yellow Lamp Do Person. And we're going to click OK. Now this is our new pre-composition layer. Well, its head got cut off a little bit, but that does happen. I'll explain why that happened in a second. But you can see that both of the elements are married together when one moves, the other moves, and this makes it a lot easier to place effects on it. Uh, now, the reason it got cut off up here, so when you pre-compose something in After Effects, it does not pre-compose anything that is not visible in the composition as it stands on your display, uh, which is why this little Pixar lamp guy got its head cut off. Sadly. I should have planned that better. Now we're getting towards the end of the program here, and I know a lot of you are probably asking, Sam, it's called After Effects. Where are the effects? How do I place them on the clips? How do I get a 3D tie-dye printed laser warp effect onto my little Pixar light guy? Well, I'm not going to teach you how to do that right now, but I can teach you the effects part. That can be done a couple of ways. One of the ways is to select the composition or layer that you want to place an effect onto. Make sure it's selected down here. Go up to the effects panel. And here you go. These are all the different effects in After Effects. We're going to do a little bit of a bulge. Let's make it a big bulge. But for my two cents, the easier way to accomplish this is to right click on the layer that you would like to affect and then tab up here to the effect panel here. And you have all the exact same options right here at your fingertips. It's just a little bit simpler 
for me, but hey, you know, let's go with the mosaic effect. Perfect, perfect. And there, my project's done. It's time for me to export. Um, wow, a masterpiece. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey, everybody. Uh, thank you for learning a little bit about After Effects with me. I hope I didn't keep you too long. Next time, you'll be back with Stuart, and he's going to teach you a little bit more about basic animation and keyframing. And that's where you really get into the meat of After Effects. So get excited. It's going to be a little bit more exciting than this. All right, that just about does it for part two. We're going to wrap up here. And uh, take it away, Stuart. Stuart.